Okay, does the sound work okay? You can hear me? Great. Um, thank you so much for um, coming to listen to this and thank you so much to Metosin for organizing this. And And uh, also, of course, for the you know pre-conference stuff, and uh, for me, it's 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 wonderful to be at the place with so much you know knowledge, closure knowledge, and uh, lots of other knowledge collected in the same place. So it's great to be here. I'm here today to talk about uh, closure and computerized psychotherapy, and uh, I work at the Karolinska Institute, that is a medical university in, in Sweden, Stockholm, Sweden. I work primarily with these two guys, Brian Jutsson and Victor Kaldo. And uh, some short things about me. I work, I'm a psychologist, but also a psycho psychotherapy researcher. Uh, since 2009, I have been doing various kinds of research on computerized psychotherapy. I had a background in computer science that I, where I had some classes in the late 90s on Common Lisp. So that was basically the only, that was the first language that I learned and basically only the, the only language that I knew some parts of. I also taught myself some scheme. So for some reason, closure arrived in my life in the late 2014 and I started thinking, I wonder if it's possible to, to build uh, psychotherapy systems in closure. Okay, so we have some problems in the world. Uh, and, uh, you know, programmers solve problems, as Rich Hickey says. Here's one problem. Mental illness is a significant, massive problem in the world today. And, for example, in Sweden, we found that 17.2% percent of the population has, you know, significant levels of depression or anxiety. That's quite a lot. Um, and it's projected that in the year two, 2020, depression will be the second mo largest cost of any disease in the world. Uh, so mental health problems for sure is a large problem for individuals, their families, but also for society. That's a, that's the first problem, the mental health problem. Okay, there exist solutions. Pharmacotherapy, you know, medications. Psychotherapy is also a solution. People generally prefer psychotherapy compared to medical treatments. But we have problems. Access to psychotherapy is extremely limited. Uh, there's not enough people to do it. The quality of psychotherapy is sometimes not always the best. Uh, so we have, here's another problem, the psychotherapy access problem. Okay, there exist solutions to this too, potential solutions. We can use the internet to provide psychotherapy. We can develop, you know, computerized tools for delivering psychotherapy. And this is one approach that has been developed in Sweden since the late 90s, that in various ways, use the internet to provide psychotherapy, and I will explain how that looks. This is most often, when I talk about computerized psychotherapy and internet-based psychotherapy, it's most often in the form of guided self-help. So this is the idea. Lots of psychotherapy can be translated to manuals, you know, can be formulated as well-specified structured forms of psychotherapy. Uh, and cognitive behavior therapy is an example of such a therapy. Ha ha how many people here has heard about cognitive behavior therapy? That's great, lots of people have done, heard about that. So this means that psychotherapies can be specified in a manual. And once you have specified it in a manual, it's not you know, hard to translate that kind of manual to self-help. This is an example of a manual that is available for clinicians to the right and the patient version to the left. So that means psychotherapy manuals can be delivered as self-help. So IC ICBT, Internet-Based Cognitive Behavior Therapy, that's an example of how 
cognitive behavior therapy can be delivered through the internet to patients, most often in the form of guided self-help. And guided self-help means that uh, you add, for example, 10 minutes of email contact to the self-help treatment. So it's a large difference between taking part of a self-help treatment and the additional and to have additional 10 minutes per week of therapist contact. And lots of research has shown that guided self-help is effective, and there's also lots of research showing that when you randomize people to take part of face-to-face -face therapy or guided self-help, for lots of conditions, the effects are totally the same. Okay. So it seems like ICBT eliminates some of the problems related to this, you know, there's a distance between patient and therapist. I don't know about the access to psychologists and psychotherapists in Tampere, but in, in the northern Sweden it can be a you know, trouble. It's, it's a trouble in all of Sweden, but for sure in, in distant rural parts. And you know, to have psychotherapy in an asynchronous form, you know, to you know, write and work with the material when, when you feel like it, lots of people experience that as very beneficial. Do you understand what I'm saying when I say asynchronous instead of synchronous psychotherapy? You know, to when you see a person face to face, that's, you know, something you need to plan to schedule during the day. Lots of people don't have time to go to psychotherapy. And, and this kind of treatment takes far less time for the therapist. So it's resource efficient. But we have the psychotherapy access problem. Okay. Uh, so, ICBT works well, but it's hard to access out of research setting. Lots of studies has done, is done, but it's very hard. I don't think it in Tampere or in Finland that it's so many possibilities. If you, if you want to have an internet-based psychotherapy, I think it's hard to, to have access to it. Uh, and the solutions that exist are not based on you know, modern technologies. Uh, it's possible to, to make them scale. So they have the ICBT technology problem. So here are the problems that we're trying to address, the mental health problem, the psychotherapy access problem, and the ICBT technology problem. And I'm here to propose two potential solutions. Okay, number one. We have built a system called Platform 5, uh, and it's, it's uh, made to address the ICBT technology problem. And here's the thing, maybe it's possible to use Clojure to write scalable web applications. Uh, and we have developed this app to, as a proof of concept of this. So I'll give you a very short demo. What's the time, Tommy, right now? I have 30 minutes left. Great. Okay. Uh, So this is the application when, when you know you, you, you can register or you can log in. So here I can log in as a, as a patient. Uh, and uh, then you have access to, to you can see it. Let's see. So you have access to a system where you can write messages to a therapist. Uh, you can take part of individual modules, uh, you know, read text, it can be, you know, this is markdown, so it can be any format, you know, text, images, HTML links with videos. Um, and uh, so this means like taking part of a book through the internet uh, and write messages to the therapist uh, complete forms, like weekly forms on the level of depression, for example, and uh, see charts, how stuff is going. And this is built using Bootstrap, so it, it automatically, uh, if the internet was working, yeah, it, it automatically renders to, um, to, to a smartphone view. And you can also, uh, in this app, 
there's different views for the also for the therapist. So here's the therapist view. Um, you can, uh, you know, select with what patient to work with. I choose this patient or this patient. Or if I choose this patient, I, you know, as a therapist, write messages. Um, I can schedule forms like, okay, this person can complete these self-report measures this week, and I, I can say that, okay, now we have access to to these modules and so on. So, so it's it's a very simple system this far. Uh, and, and for me, it was a way of learning closure. Uh, back in December, I, I, I didn't know what a div was uh, in the HTML. So, so it has been a trip for me to learn both closure and, and web programming. But currently, uh, we're using the... Have, how many of you have heard about the Luminous framework? Yeah, by uh, Yogtos. And I think it's really excellent way to start once you, you know, understand the code. Um, so currently, this is a totally server-based solution, and which uses the standard uh, Luminous libraries, and we use a connection to the Postgres. And and you know, once you use your, those tools, tools, it automatically works to you know run it in Heroku. I think that's really great. The template we use is also. It's made by a group called Creative Tim. So we hope to release something about this server-side solution. And of course, you know, when, when you learn about web programming and closure and stuff, you, you know, get a lot of ideas how to proceed further. And, and we have started exploring how to you know, separate the server and client. And we, we're really now trying to think, OK, how can we make a really an abstract specification of cognitive behavior therapy? How can we? think of this kind of services as an API. So we have started exploring that using Composure API by Metosin. And also, when have, how to say it, once we have that in place, you know, it's open up for so many clients. So you know, people can take a part of the therapy as from an app using React Native, as Victor will talk more about, uh, and also you know, lots of closure script solutions. Maybe also a WebSocket connection for live notifications and stuff. OK, so, so the psychotherapy access problem, there's still you know, an, an upper limit of what we can do here. So another way of you know, thinking about this is that, OK, do we need a therapist at all? How far can we go without a therapist? Me personally, I, I think we, we can't you know, have that as the primary aim to you know, build only tools that where we treat people without any people. So there's lots of stuff here. Even if we build lots of tools, we still need, you know, psychotherapists to be to provide the guidance in the guided self-help treatments. So problems are not totally solved. But here's the thing that we're thinking also about. What if all psychologists also, you know, were full stack developers, or at least, you know, one percent of the psychologists know how to, you know, develop. That would be great, I think. So, and my personal experience is, is that, you know, functional programming as a first language is so intuitive. I think you can teach that to kids. I'm sure, you know, people in the audience has tried that. Uh, and closure can, for sure, I think, be taught as a first language. So we have made some efforts to, you know, teach, you know, non-programmer health, pro health professionals how to code. And this is so no new, we have no clue what will come out of that. But I'm, I'm really curious what people will start building when they already have a profession. They want to do their thing in new ways using, you know, web apps that, for example, runs in the cloud. And I have been working on a text that uh, describe this, uh, an introduction for basically psychologists on how to build example psychology service that becomes more and more complex during the text using closure and luminous. It's based on the service side solution right now. And I hope to release that later during the year. OK, so, so summary, the mental health problem is a massive problem. 
and psychological treatments are powerful. People prefer them. Psychological treatments has a benefit to lots of medical treatments in that it's really possible to integrate with technology in a way that medical treatments cannot. ICBT as a phenomena can help to reduce the psychotherapy access problem. And I think closure seems to me, based on my exploration, seems to be a perfect fit to solve lots of parts in the ICBT technology problem. And uh, I think the psychotherapy access problem may be even, it may be reduced by, you know, teaching health professionals to become full stack developers. Thank you. Okay, I think it's time for questions. Yeah, okay. So any questions? I don't know about, okay, the, the mic is running. Hi, so uh, you mentioned that you would also like to see other health professionals, other professions um, start benefiting from using uh, internet-based therapy. Uh, what fields were you, did you have in mind when you said that it might be used in other forms of therapy? Uh, I don't think, uh, I can't think of any field that can't be used. Um, the, the first thing that comes to mind is, you know, there's a lot of coaching services that can be used in very similar way. You can structure what you do in terms of uh, modular based services, like psychotherapy can be modularized in this way. Uh, I'm sure, you know, for example, physical therapy would also be an example of a treatment where the part of the treatment doesn't need to be said by a person. Some stuff can be recorded, some stuff can be, you know, in text, and it can be provided in this form. Uh, and, and lots of other professions also have their things that connects great to, you know, technology. I'm sure physical therapists have devices that they, you know, would love to connect to a smartphone that could be, you know, written in the same way. Okay, yeah, I think there was a question in the front here. That's, that's one more question? Only one more question. Uh, I think it was a brilliant idea to teach uh, psychologists and psychiatrists uh, people to program. How, how have they reacted when you have proposed this to your colleagues that, okay, now you should try to do some closure programming? What has been the reaction of your colleagues? Al almost, uh, the question was about the reaction from psychologists. Uh, almost uh, all the time, I can't do that. Uh, but, and and uh, one of my friends, Brian, wh when he was at the workshop I had, and when I opened the terminal and we started using line again, he thought, this is going to, this is just going to be a disaster. But people is remarkably, I think, tolerant to, you know, they can, you know, continue exploring without understanding. People who don't have an, uh, 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 who have never have had the concept of a function, can you know understand? Okay, these four functions, it's like Lego blocks that does things to each other. Okay, I, I can start, you know, changing the code in the examples and see how stuff happens. So once we start, you know, exploring examples and they can see the effects happening live. That has been a, whoa, whoa, I can really do this. And also to run it on Heroku is really a, a cool thing for many people that w whatever I did here exploring, oh, it's now running in the cloud, I can access it on my smartphone. That really makes people, you know, curious. Uh, but it really helps to have a starting framework for people. Like, for example, this, the, the thing that Luminous provides. So, um, yeah. Okay, I think that was the last question. Thank, thank you so much for listening.